Well, it's a great pleasure. Yes, thank you. Nice to see 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 you.
reflection campaign was the refurbishing the relationship of trust between the United States and the United States being our friend. Well, I, I didn't say that. I just said that our, our program. Okay, guys, that's it. It's over. Thank you. This is As part of Prime Minister Mulroney's visit to the United States, it's most appropriate to recognize our close and continuing cooperation in the pursuit of the many peaceful opportunities of space. Canada was our first international satellite partner during the early days of the space program, and that partnership has grown stronger ever since. Most recently, we watched Canada's contribution to the space shuttle perform with perfection the remote manipulator system, better known as the Canadon. He, it's been used on almost every space shuttle mission, and this past April, the Canadarn retrieved the crippled Solar Max satellite and then placed it safe back into orbit after repairing it on board. And today, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to introduce Canada's first astronaut, Dr. Marc Garneau. Early next month, Mark will be aboard Space Shuttle Mission 41G and will conduct about 10 experiments in space science and technology and life science. These important experiments will help build a better tomorrow in space and right here on Earth. Mark is joined by two other members of next month's shuttle, Bob Crippen, the mission commander, and Kathy Sullivan. And Bob commanded the mission when the Canadarm was first used to deploy a satellite and was also aboard when Solar Max was retrieved and repaired. And Kathy will take the first spacewalk by an American woman, and I know how she's looking forward to that opportunity. Yes, sir. Very much. The space shuttle has opened a new era to pursue the many scientific, educational, industrial, and commercial opportunities of space, and I'm proud that Canada is an important part of this adventure. And as we work to meet the next challenge, the development of a permanently manned space station. We want Canada and all of our friends to join us. Our future can be shaped by our dreams and visions. And working together on the space shuttle and our space station, we can push back the frontiers of space and open the doors to discovery, opportunity, and progress. So, Mr. Prime Minister, let me close by presenting you with a photo album showing the Canada arm being used I'm turning the wrong way, except I had to get this, didn't I? The, um, this also, uh, it shows the Canada that was used on all the previous missions also. And also, we have a plaque, which I think we will just display and get to you without us taking it. Not that we're not both able-bodied. <laughs> we are. But um, this contains the U.S. and Canadian flags that were flown on previous missions uh, when the Canada was, was being used. So please accept these as symbols of our strong friendship and our confidence in a bright future for both of our great nations. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, um, in a recent election campaign, uh, my party and I campaigned on a program uh, in part of refurbishing the relationship, historic relationship of trust and friendship uh, between the United States of America and Canada. 
and uh, this implies uh, no subservience. It uh, invites uh, merely a degree of maturity and understanding that uh, our trade and our technological advances uh, hinge upon uh, an excellent relationship which um, uh, my government and I will always work towards improving. And I think, uh, uh, Mr. President, the indication of that in the past is the uh, uh, joint efforts that we have made uh, in space in the peaceful uh, pursuit of uh, mutual objectives in that area, as we will continue to uh, work in the peaceful pursuit of, of a, a durable peace for all mankind. And this, I think, symbolizes what two sovereign countries uh, can do together. Alors, euh, Monsieur le Président, euh, je suis particulièrement fier d'être ici aujourd'hui en présence euh, d'un objet de fierté euh, tout à fait spécial pour nous du Canada euh, qui va se joindre à vous et vos collègues dans un avenir très rapproché dans une initiative euh, spectaculaire. Alors, euh, Monsieur Garneau euh, et ses collègues, à vous tous, nous disons uh, our sincere thanks and congratulations to you, uh, our astronauts, who are symbols of accomplishment and valor and courage and unity, symbols, hopeful symbols for all mankind. Mr. President, to you and uh, your colleagues, my thanks, and uh, to the astronauts, our warm uh, good wishes. Thank you. Mr. President, just before you leave, uh, although uh, we're in a period of some austerity in Canada, we would, we would like to make a presentation uh, to you of uh, symbolizing Canada's contribution to our joint effort. Well, thank you very much. And we would like to convey the good wishes and the pride of the people of Canada in our joint accomplishment. Most and we wish you well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. There you are.
Well, it was with great pleasure that we welcomed Brian Mulroney back to the White House. He was here this past June and now returns as Prime Minister of Canada, America's neighbor, ally, and most important economic partner and great friend. I congratulated Prime Minister Mulroney on winning a decisive and historical electorate mandate from the people of Canada. As the other North American Irishman, I also wished him well in his new responsibilities. The Prime Minister and I exchanged views on a broad range of global issues. We reviewed our common search to advance our agenda for peace, particularly the search for real and equitable reductions in the levels of nuclear arms. I told him that in our efforts to build a lasting structure of peace and security, we shall continue to value the experience, the counsel, and the participation of our Canadian allies. A healthy North American economic relationship is essential to the prosperity of our two countries. We discussed some potential ways of increasing trade and investment between us. The Prime Minister impressed upon me the importance his government attaches to environmental concerns, and we intend to pursue these issues together. Frequent consultations are one of the hallmarks of the relationship between Canada and the United States. And I told the Prime Minister and I look forward to continuing the fruitful dialogue that we had today. In addition, I've asked Secretary Schultz to continue the series of very productive, regular meetings that he has had with his Canadian counterparts. Even the closest of partners and allies may not always see things in exactly the same way, but we agree to keep each other's interests in mind, to keep one another informed, and to hear one another out on the issues which may arise between us. We, too, intend to give our neighbor the benefit of the doubt. So I thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for coming here today. And once again, congratulations on your decisive victory, and à la prochaine. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, an hour ago, you and I had the great pleasure of meeting Canadian and American astronauts soon to be launched into space. No endeavor better underscores our friendship or so dramatically indicates the potential for cooperation by our two countries in the service of mankind than the peaceful use of space. Such an effort, it seems to me, demonstrates to us all the tremendous potential for improved cooperation and joint development of our two countries. Yesterday in the United Nations, you reached out to the Soviet Union with a message of peace and you invited the leaders of the world to join in what we can accomplish together. We commend you, Mr. President, for this appeal and for your leadership in this vital area. 
For our part, we intend to continue to seek opportunities for constructive dialogue with the Soviet Union and with Eastern European countries. We will contribute, continue to contribute as we have in the past, ideas which may help yield results in our common search for peace and security. Our two countries have much to offer each other, and I believe together to the world. President Kennedy once said that geography has made us neighbors, history has made us friends, economics has made us partners, and necessity has made us allies. Nous avons en commun la plus longue frontière non défendue du monde. Nous gérons ensemble un magnifique patrimoine nord-américain. Nous défendons l'un et l'autre un système de valeurs enraciné dans la splendeur des libertés démocratiques. Nous avons amorcé aujourd'hui ce qui sera, je l'espère, un dialogue constructif et permanent sur les questions tant mondiales que bilatérales. La première mission du nouveau gouvernement est d'effectuer un renouveau économique, en d'autres mots, d'accroître les échanges, attirer de nouveaux investissements et de rechercher de nouveaux marchés. En instaurant un climat propice à une croissance économique vigoureuse, nous souhaitons créer des nouveaux emplois qui vont améliorer le sort de nos concitoyens. The principal task, Mr. President, of our new government is economic renewal, to expand trade, to attract new investment and to seek new markets. By establishing a climate for vigorous economic growth, we wish to create the new jobs that our people need and we believe deserve. We wish to mobilize our very best talents at home and to seek out new partners abroad. We feel that a strong external voice is based on a vigorous domestic economy. Our talks today have focused on strengthening and indeed intensifying consultation between the executive arm of our two governments and also between the Congress and the Parliament of Canada. We want more coherence in the management of our relationship and more action in regard to our shared priorities. And so, Mr. President, we must deepen our understanding of what we share together and of the distinctive interests we have in international affairs. And I thank you, Mr. President, for your generous hospitality and for a most satisfying exchange of views. Merci. Do after that. 